Good evening and welcome to all of you that have joined in. My name is Stephen Siegel and for those of you that don't know, those of you that are coming back, welcome, welcome to Through the Lens. So as you know, every week we chat to a new company, a brand and a creator that is making waves. Um, tonight we've got a, a, a phenomenal lineup. We've got Roger Martian that is the product marketing manager for Canon that's going to be joining us. Yes, that's right. He's going to be right here on the show. And then we've got Quentin Mills, a phenomenal photographer, multifaceted, multi-talented. His work, he can shoot anything and it just looks absolutely amazing. So I'm really excited to be chatting to them. This is going to be a jam-packed show. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some banter. It's going to be pretty much, yeah, different to what we used to, I think. But it's all about having fun. So those of you that are out there that have just joined for the first time, hey, Emmy, great to see you. And there you go, Emmy. <laughs> It was great chatting to you last week. Yeah, super insp inspirational. Absolutely love having you on. So those of you that have joined for the first time, the, the idea behind the show is to be able to put a face to the brand per se when it comes to the, obviously the brand spotlight to tell you what the brands are about, what they're looking at, you know, where they're headed so that you can try and be ahead of the wave with regards to where technology and brands are headed. Then obviously on the creator corner, it's all about understanding the creator, understanding what makes them tick, understanding what makes them successful, you know, how they get through the hard times, how they get through the good times, and they're kind of how they operate. And it's not so much, you know, how was this image created, how that image was created, especially with season one. I'm trying to get you to understand and know who the brands are and who the people are. And then what we do is, as we're moving into season two is when we start getting exciting. And obviously, hopefully, a COVID would have <laughs> ended so we can get out on the road and get out there onto some locations. So that's what the show's about. If you would like to ask questions, please feel free to ask questions. Um, here we go. Johan Grelin, thank you so much. It's great having you on. Thank you very, very much. Those are the kind of messages, and we need uh, I need you to help me spread, obviously, the word of the show so that we can help as many people as we can. You'll see I had a chat before we started the show with Quinton. Love what he's doing. He's got an amazing Hunters of Light program that he's doing that we're going to be discussing as well. So let's push this industry forward. Let's get this industry rocking because right now, in these times, this is when creators are going to really succeed. People and companies need content, and we are the content creators that need to deliver it. All right, so before we get going, well, let's get on to the first thing that we're going to be chatting about is obviously, um, well, I first want to make sure that you guys follow on Through the Lens show on Instagram. Make sure you go and follow there. Um, again, I told you that I am going to be putting the content it is backed up a little bit, so now we'll start pushing some of the content with some of the creators that we've worked through. Then we start out and we get into the industry news. So industry news, obviously, I mean, we chatted about Canon. We're going to be chatting Canon now with Roger as after this. But obviously, everyone has been waiting to hear about what's happened with, I mean, there was always speculation and rumors with regards to Sony's um, release of the A7S III, uh, Mark III. And it is out and it has got some amazing features on it. So go and have a look at that. With regards to other features, I mean, we did talk about last week, there was the release of the uh, Z5 from Nikon. And then obviously Fuji is making waves with the X-T4. And then obviously those of you, the brands out there that are watching, we want to know if there's any industry news that we can share with the local market. It's all great for me to share international news, but I really want to get news here down and dirty into South Africa and see what we can do from that. So that's obviously in the industry news side of things. Then when it comes to new and review, I'm going to show you this next product. Again, it's one of the products that definitely those of you that are in video and doing live streaming and that kind of thing is a product that you'll really want to have a look at. I got it from uh, Singer Photographic. Have a look at this video and then we'll jump into it.
Done. So that is it. This is the Ceremonic Blink 500 B1 that I'm going to be testing out. Um, it is obviously, like you saw, lapel mics as well as a microphone. I love the packaging with regards to these new products. Again, one of the big things, you can see my hands nice and sweaty there, but what one of the nice things that I love is when you see that a product has been packaged really beautifully, they've taken care of what they do and how they set it up. So I'm going to be testing this out and letting you know what it's like. Again, these reviews are going to go onto our YouTube site. And as you know, please, those of you that are catching us on Facebook, uh, make sure that you go and subscribe to our YouTube or my YouTube channel to be able to get some of the insights of the products, the links to the products. And then we've also organized some special pricing for the products that I'm showing for review and potentially some of the brands that I'm introducing. So let's quickly see what uh, people are saying out there. Let's quickly check. Uh, we're patiently waiting for mine as well. All right, so that's enough about that. Those of you that are new to the industry, let's say you've just got out of college and you'd love some exposure. I'm still waiting for some people to jump on up and coming rising star. This is where you get an opportunity to be put in front of some of the top brands. I mean, we've got Roger Marsh and that's going to be coming up. He's always looking out for uh, new talent and stuff. So come on, send your stuff through. Make sure you contact me so that we can get you showcased on the show. All right, enough about that. We're going to be moving through to our brand spotlight. And tonight's brand spotlight is with none other than Canon and Roger Martian, that is the product marketing manager for the brand. Um, he knows everything there is to know with regards to photography. And obviously, this brand, you'll see, you'll never have met such a passionate person when it comes to his brand and his product and, you know, photography, videography, content creation itself. So please welcome onto the show, Roger, as he is going to have a chat with us tonight. How's it, Roger? How are you? Hello there. How's it going? <laughs> Great to have you on. Thank you so much for joining me. Cool. Thanks for letting me uh, just uh, pop in from my studio here at the house, um, <laughs> working from home and like you know moving my camera cupboards and some demo gear kicking around and putting some lights up. Yeah, it looks vaguely professional. I, I, I mean, that's at home. I, I look at that setup. You, how many cameras yeah. and gear do you have there? <laughs> I, I, this, this is this is my personal uh, vintage camera collection. I've uh, picked those up over the oh. sure a good sort of fifteen twenty odd years. Um, wow. The the other ones are on the other side. Uh, that that's an old six hundred mm FD lens. Uh, the other white one is is actually one of my samples. It's a it's an eight hundred mm five point six that I use for birding. But um, for oh, the most part, this, this this lot is stuff that I've connected over the years from. The 1950s, 1960s, etc., and it's all canon, and they're all beautiful. Oh, I absolutely love it. <laughs> I love that collection. Someone that really takes pride in what they do. So, tell me, what's been yeah. happening? What you've been up to, Roger? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, since the, the the 9th of July, obviously, the the world is going mad for for this little baby, the uh, the wonderful EOS R5. Um, we're, yeah. we're we're loving it to, to absolute pieces. There's ups, there's downs, there's lefts, there's rights. Um, you know, some people loving it, some people hating it. Um, there's been some really, really good responses from from our competitors, and um, yep. you know, people have sort of forgotten about the fact that there's other stuff like that baby, the EOS R6, uh, and the wonderful yeah. sustainable, and the wonderful the 800 mil and the 100 500. Um, it wasn't just uh, about the R5, and um, yeah, that, that's kind of started all the thunder. And it, it, it's great in its own little right, but there was other stuff. I mean, this little thing, the, the, the 85 mil F2. <gasps> oh, it, it, yeah, it's one of the most exquisite you. lenses and it was just like oh yeah canon also launched a nice new lens i'm like you gotta see this <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> yeah there's more to it Come but uh, yeah it's interesting times but not and tell me with regards to it and, and this is what i'm obviously wanting to go because i definitely we're going to chat about the r5 and r6 absolutely and obviously the lens side of things but tell so, me a little bit more about canon's heritage in the country you know oh, okay. where you've come from where you're going and tell me a little bit more about canon's culture like what are you you know who is canon if i can put it that yeah. way so start with heritage and then let's get into the culture okay, cool well, well, you know, we, we're a deeply Japanese company. Uh, I mean, we, we were formed uh, in the late uh, sort of mid 1930s in, in Japan, uh, a Tokyo based company, um, family organization. We've had uh, CEOs from the same sort of family for the entire existence uh, of the company for the last sort of 90 odd years. And um, the CEO, current CEO, Mr. Mitsurai, um, is related to the one of the original founders of the company. So it's, it's very much um, a family organization from at the heart of it. But um, where we are now, I mean, we're, we're currently represented in about 270 countries around the world. Uh, we employ around about 155, 160,000 people wow. globally. 
which is which is absolutely wow. massive and um we we've got uh, development facilities production facilities uh pretty much all over the world and um and we're booming and and we're expanding uh, left right and center we've just probably i think one of the most recent offices we opened was in uh in west africa in in ghana and um, oh, we're currently okay. investigating investigating some of the indian ocean islands for the next the next island the, the next canon office officially but um, yeah. Canon South Africa uh, is an official uh, wholly owned subsidiary of Canon International. Uh, okay, so you're not a distributor. By, no, no, we're we're a wholly owned subsidiary, and um, cool. and because of that, we 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 sort of owned by Canon Europe. Uh, so there's three okay. geographical zones: um, Canon Inc. in Japan, they handle uh, the Far East and Australia. Um, Canon USA that handles uh, North, Central, and South America, and Canon Europe that handles Europe, Middle East, Africa, and all the way across to to Russia as well. So um, yeah, we, we we form the the South African Regional Sales Organization, and we handle all the way up to um, Angola, Zambia, Zim, Mozambique, Madagascar, Reunion, and Mauritius. So that's pretty much that the, the territory we work under. Um, we've been going officially as Canon South Africa since the uh, the first of January two thousand. So this is our twentieth year officially being in the country. Um, unlike other brands that have uh, come in and left the country and tried to come back and left again, uh, etc., we we stuck it out. And um, yeah. you know, three seconds in, I, I'm sorry, I have to have that little dig, um, mostly because because <laughs> uh, our two biggest two two or three biggest competitors, uh, you know, have, um, have 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 not been able to stick it out, and and, and we've been here yeah. solidly for the twenty years, and we, we we're looking yeah. forward to a, 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 you know a, a, a long future as uh, investing in this country. Yeah. No, brilliant, brilliant. And tell me a little bit. I mean, so obviously being uh, not a distributor, it, it, which stands you in good stead with regards to it. Mm. Tell me your culture. Like, what is your typical yeah. culture in the company? Well, it, you know, it, it is a deeply Japanese culture, and we 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 work on um, a Kiyose philosophy, uh, which is you know it, it's been sort of handed down since the nineteen forties, nineteen fifties. One of our presidents came up with this mentality uh, called Kiyose, which is uh, working in harmony. Uh, with people and with the community for the common good, and the idea that yeah. that, that that Canon, we believe that in the um, at the very core of our our business and in everything we do, we have what we call a Sanji spirit, which is self management, uh, self awareness, okay. and um, I that. Uh, self self management. It's it's all about um, the the company comes first, and um, yeah. in the greater scheme of things. We work uh, in community with uh, with nature. Uh, we're, we're one of the most climate friendly com companies in the world. We you know we recycle around about thirty percent of the the, um, the the waste that comes out of our factories, and we reduce our waste by thirty percent every single year. We're ISO fourteen thousand and one certified globally. Uh, that means yeah. every single Canon office in every single country had to meet that ISO certification. Uh, you wouldn't believe wow. the recycling that happens at our office. And it, it goes beyond just what happens at, at the office. Canon invests in me as an employee. They bought me yeah. a, a, solar, a solar heating blanket for, for my geezer. All of the light bulbs in my house are low energy, low wattage uh, fluorescence, wow. specifically because wow. this is but this is part of Canon's culture and this is who and what we are. So we believe it at the core of our being, that the environment and the culture and working with people for the common good. So, you know, we don't yeah. supply products for, for military use. We're, um, yeah. you know, we don't, we don't make, spotting scopes for rifles for example <laughs> yeah no <laughs> so no that was a, that was well, a subtle little dig you know <laughs> You know, and this is this is pretty much. And those of you that are watching, obviously, that are digged in, is is that you know, it's some of you are going, oh, but you know, we want to know about the R five, R six. We're definitely going to get onto that. But sure. you know, this is what makes up a company, and I think this is what people don't get. They they see Canon as being Canon or Nikon or Fuji or Sony, but they don't see the actual culture behind and the people that sure. drive it, and you know, the passion that you've got. I mean, I can see the passion. You know, your company backwards, forwards. Oh, yeah. I mean, the way you talk is just. It's great to see that. I see a Johan Freiling clapping there and smiling. <laughs> oh, <what's it? laughs> we, um, we even have so, we have even have a company song. You know, uh, they they don't sing it in the European organization, but uh, in all of our Japanese offices, they they sing it every morning when they get to work, which is great. Uh, and I mean, yeah. uh, one of the best best things I ever read was um, was written by a guy from. Um, Times Magazine, and he wrote a book called um, How Canon Got Its Flashback, and it's the turnaround yep. tactics of uh, Fujio Mitrai, our current CEO, how he took our company yep. and he looked at how we were just doing things the total wrong way. We were trying to make machines out of people, and yep. um, he changed our entire 
workflow instead of production lines of just you know things moving along and people just working like machines we now work yeah. in modulus modular cells so this one table of, of 20 people the guy number one starts with a shell by the time it gets to yeah. number 20 it's a full functioning working camera package in a box ready to go and there's not a single yeah. weak link in the chain it's beautiful and I, I went right. to the production facility, and they were they were teaching us, um, you know, how the trainees work. And, and you've got an yeah. electric screwdriver, and you've got a metal plate. You've got to put seven screws into this metal plate, and it's a magnetic yeah. screwdriver. So you tap on the screw, and you put it in the plate. And they said, like, you know, give it a try, see how fast you could do it. And there was about ten of us, and I think the one guy managed to do it in about thirty-two seconds. And yeah. uh, they said, well, well done. When you get to uh, seven seconds, we'll put you on the production line. <laughs> seven screws into wow. a plate in seven seconds, I, and and that that's um, that was just that was just the training area. It was hysterical. But you know, <laughs> we, we have things like um, speedometers in the factory for maximum productivity. Yeah. You you walk at minimum of three four kilometers an hour, and you walk down yeah. a passage, and there's a line on yeah. the on the on the ground, and if you step yeah. over it and you're moving less than three kilometers an hour, a little warning light flashes, and your your badge with your ID number comes up next to it. This is no, two, for example. You're only walking at two kilometers an hour. What? Yeah. No. Get way. moving, dude. <laughs> yeah, let's get yeah, to the next one. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we 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 know that you know your, your bathroom breaks are two or four minutes. You know that's that's what you get. Yeah, go, go for it. <laughs> don't think it's I no, don't think no, it's no, bad, no. But, <laughs> no, no. But it's amazing with regards to productivity. But now tell me, I mean, obviously the other thing that that I picked up on is obviously on the Canon side of things is you got a full ecosystem. So you feed obviously yeah. those photographers can literally come in. And it's yeah. not just about photo video, it's it's photo video printing. And I mean, you've pretty much got your full ecosystem built in. Yeah, well, that, that's one of the cool things um, that happened back in the 70s. You know, we uh, we needed to, to diversify. Uh, cameras were, were sort of doing okay, but it wasn't all we wanted to do. And um, we started investigating electronic machines. We did the world's first, you know, 10-digit calculator, the world's first 13-digit calculator, bizarrest of bizarre. But um, moving into copiers, moving into faxes, et cetera. Now, cameras yep. now is probably around about 30% um, of our total business. Um, yeah. Business machines uh, and copiers, et cetera, is around about sort of 35, 40%. And then yep. the remaining remaining sort of 20, 30 odd percent is um, either OEM products or medical or um, other sort of weird stuff that I, you know, sometimes I, I look at Canon catalogs and I'm like, what is this? You know, wow. lenses for yeah. semiconductor machines. So uh, we do we yeah. do things like photolithography machines, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So things that convert silicon wafers into uh, semiconductors. Um, yeah. There's a new division we're working on, which is quite interesting, um, making cameras and lenses and sensors um, yeah. for vehicle automo automation, because oh, that's okay. going to that's going wow. to be the the next huge thing. Is that self driving cars is most certainly something in the future. And they need high resolution, high detailed cameras that can, yeah. you know, um, using some of the deep learning technology that we've got, automatically yeah. identify this, this is a lamppost, that's a bush, that's a letter, letterbox, that's a pavement, that's a, you know, that's a stop street, that's yeah. a human being, you know, that's a dog. Yeah. You want to stop for the dog? You can go through the lamppost, you know, those kind of things. So, um, we, we're developing some some really really interesting tech as far as that's concerned, and and I, I love it. Yeah, the the medical side is is fascinating. Um, but we also do like cuckoo stuff, like uh, we make lenses for telescopes in Hawaii. And we're talking about yeah, a lens that's yeah. not nine meters in diameter. So, you know, that sounds like fun. Yeah, what the hell? Let's go do that. You know, yeah, it's, it's good. It. Yeah. Now, 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 this is where I'm going to be pushing you onto it because I mean, obviously, that recognition, eye recognition, face recognition, and all of that. Yeah. Let's move into your latest tech, R5, sure. R6. Yeah. Tell me what this the cameras are making waves, obviously, in the industry. Tell give us dive in a little bit into that. And then also tell sure. me where, where are you guys headed with regards to it? Because if this is where you're going, I yeah. know you can't give me some secrets on stuff that not. isn't coming out yet. Yeah. <laughs> but well, but tell, tell me a little bit more. Well, to just just to give you an idea, the, the R5, the R6 were in development uh for a lot longer than um the ESR, which was launched in 2018. Uh, and we put yeah. that into the market to t just to show people uh, what we were doing, what we were thinking. The R came along exactly the same as a 5D4. The RP came along exactly the same as an EOS 6D2. And the, the idea was to, to start showing you 
what we were thinking, where we were going, and more importantly, about this stuff, the, the glass, about what these lenses look like, what mm. they're capable of doing, the, the fact that we can make a 2870 F2. This is this is just you know never 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 possible in in the traditional you know autofocus mount. So um, yeah, yeah so the, the the R the R and the RP came along and they showed us what we were capable of doing. And then we put the you know the entire pro ecosystem in there, the Trinity that the, the pros want. Uh, and then we said, okay, now's the time to play with the big boys. We've got the R5, we've got the R6, two really yeah. really really serious playing cameras. Now you can read the specs till you blue blue in the face. You know, some yeah. some things are great, some things are not that great, etc. 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 At the end of the day, we've made some incredible hybrid machines. When I say hybrids, yeah. it, it, they, they are very 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 functional as photographic products, but predominantly. Uh, you know, very, very, very functional as video cameras as well. And that yeah. sort of combination is what we were aiming at. Because it's, yeah. you know, if we made something spectacularly brilliant for video, the, the photographers might go, well, you know, e. you know, unlike our competitors yeah. who have actually branched out into separate products, for example, yeah. you know, the a A7R is, is a very good photographic, A7S is very good video. They've done that deliberately. Um, yeah. Canon's still, you know, we, we're still only generation two or three, you know, as far as cameras are concerned. Um, wow. we're, we're not five years into it, like like Sony, for example. And um, yeah. I think th this is, you know, just a hint of things to come that we are really uh, we're investing heavily in this. Um, and it's not only about the cameras; it's about that camera lens combination and what we can do mm -hmm. with this new sensor, what we could do with this new mirrorless technology, as far as optics is concerned. Because you know, yeah. the, 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 pho the photographic stuff, the EF mount, I mean, that's been out since yeah. 1987. And we've kind of reached a sort of design threshold. We've got to a point where there's nothing new. There's nothing radical, nothing exciting anymore. It's all Mark II, Mark III, new coating, slightly smaller, lighter, you know, different paint color, whatever it is. Um, and we've got to a point where there's no... I, I think the last radical, crazy lens we made was the, um, the 11-24 which was a rectilinear yeah. lens, a rectilinear zoom lens okay. back in back in 2015. But since then, nothing radical. But um, yeah. RF mount just lets us play, and we can go nuts. And as I say, things like that 2870 F2, the 800mm the F11 that weighs you know, at, at 1.3 ki 2 kilos. Um, <laughs> yeah. Mir Mirrorless is yeah. allowing our engineers to go boss, and they are just going absolutely crazy. And it is... So exciting to see what they have in mind for the next couple of months. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting times. Next couple of years, sorry, months, <laughs> years. Um, the, this is this is this is a year where where we're you know people must sit up and take notice that Canon is uh, not only just back in the fray. We we're, we're back where we belong um, yeah. as as one of the, one of the serious players on the market. Um, yeah, and you can say what you like about the R five. It's class leading in some specs. Um, yeah. It is, you know, there's no other 8K camera on the market uh, at that sub, yeah. sub 100,000 round category. Um, you know, the 20 frames a second uh, electronic and the, the 12 frames a second mechanical on the, on the R6 at that price point. Again, cl class leading. Um, yeah. This is this is the one that we're, we're actually really excited about. The, the R5, the guys are just, you know, it, it's a lot of money. Make no mistake. Those guys are just going to yeah. come in and buy it. But this baby, um, this baby uh, is... Is astonishing, and and what we what we're doing with autofocus now is is beyond anything I I I, I believe possible, and it, and it's heartbreaking. No. There's, there's there's a DX3 over there with cobwebs on it. It's like <laughs> what, greatest camera I've ever, ever ever used for for two months until we hit lockdown and my R5 arrived. Oh, geez. oh my goodness gracious! You know what what's interesting looking from the outside in, and I mean I see there's some patents that came in. Is that you know there's there's big things to come on the Canon side of things. Uh, it's it's Ooh. almost like you know you're holding back on certain things to come in with. <laughs> some more clout onto the industry. Well, well, of course, yeah. No, the um, I see you itching things. to say something. <laughs> one, of, one of the best things that I, I saw was uh, when we launched the ESR. R. Um, there was yeah. four lenses in the foreground, and then in the shadows behind it, there was about sort of twenty, thirty outlines and shapes of lenses. And uh, I, I saw that, and I asked the, one of my Japanese managers, "It's like, what, what, what are those?" And he said, "Ah, oh, those are some of the things we work <laughs> on." And I'm like, no, 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 no. There was one that was fatter than oh, this, brilliant. longer and fatter. It looked like a bucket, you know, like a pucker <laughs> bucket to put out a fire. And then I saw a, a, a patent for a, a 70 to 150 F2. And if they could do that, 
holy crap, you know, an F2 yeah. 7150. The, the mind boggles. But but again, I, I'm led to believe that there's there's no there's no handbrakes. Uh, the engineers are just being told, go and yeah. do what the hell you like. And, and the, the brilliance is, is the um, the adapter, you know, the, the little EF to RF uh, adapter. Um, all of your existing yeah. EF lenses fit and work, and they fit and work with zero restrictions. In fact, they work better on the new mirrorless than they ever did on, on SLR. Uh, and it's really, 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 um, you know, it, it is exciting times, make no mistake. Yeah. Oh, I see there's an interesting comment. Not yes, Martin, the, the products have left Europe, <laughs> the R5s. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> not only has it left there Europe, go, it, yeah. has, it has arrived in South Africa. We have one tiny, tiny, oh, tiny yeah. little glitch in the fact that the, um, the person from ICASA, who needs to give us a license, uh, yeah. has been off sick. I'm hoping against all hopes he's not COVID. But um, there's a couple of people at ICASA we have to, have to, have to, have to, have to wait for. Um, we, it's imminent. I'm led to believe by Thursday, tomorrow, or Friday this week, we should have that sticker, in which case they'll be in the stores this weekend. Um, if you've got one on back order, <sighs> bait fuss, <laughs> it's imminent. Yeah, we go. Here's another one. Will we ever see a camera that is just built oh. for stills without video or is still images nowadays based on grabbing uh, video clips? 20 frames a second, almost video thinking. Cost, but um, it is a public-driven trend. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a great question, Johan. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm really sorry to 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 break your heart, but there, there will never be a camera that's purely stills uh, and, and w without a video capability. It's just, uh, and unfortunately... Um, not necessarily public driven trend, but pro photographer driven trend. Um, mm. But also, not only pro, pro photographer, it's also um, the market we're dealing with. You know, fa yeah. Facebook, for example, once they started putting adverts as video, once Instagram started allowing you to write stories that were moving images, uh, once YouTube started going ballistic, uh, the moving image sells more than a static image. I'm sorry to say it is what it is. Yeah. And as a pro yeah. photographer, you, you have to start recording some video clips together with the stills to augment a story or to augment the offering you're you're providing to your customer or also to augment yeah. your social your social media. Really? So yeah. you're still still pictures. I, I, again, I'm really sorry to say it's just not enough anymore. <coughs> sorry. Yeah. And that age of purely stills cameras with with little or no video um i'm afraid it's really really, really are gone. gone they will yeah. all be hy hybrids now along um what is interesting however is the video for us for example the r5 at 8k running at 30 frames a second is essentially a 30 million pixel slr 30 times a second yeah. and if you if you shoot at a high enough shutter speed you can actually just mm. roll 8k video of, of of action and you can draw 30 jpegs per second uh, out of that video, uh, out of that video feed, and each one of them at thirty million pixels. Um, does it make you a little bit lazy? Uh, no, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Does it mean you'll never miss the shot? Yeah, that that becomes a yeah. very, very interesting thing. Yeah, it becomes a very. You still have to go thing. through all those images, though. Definitely, you still have to go through that whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and 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 again, the um the little memory cards uh, on this on this yeah. camera, the um the CF Express, uh, a five hundred and twelve gig gives you about twenty five minutes of footage, yeah. uh, and the five hundred and twelve gigs sell for about thirty five thousand rand. Yes, that's in that the thirty thousand rand. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's more yeah, than an end. That's insane. But you know what? That's the whole thing. And I've been, I've been really droning it into everyone that's been sitting here and they're going, because I've been showing different hard drives and obviously yeah. CF Express. And, you know, you have to, you know, these cameras are phenomenal, but you just need those accessories to bulk onto it to make sure it keeps running. So tell yeah, me, Roger, yeah, I wanted yeah. to ask you before we go, um, yeah. where's Canon's focus with regards to it? Is it into live streaming, bloggers, vloggers? Is it still focused, obviously, on the core, you know, photographic market with wildlife and portrait death? Give me an idea. Well, well, I, I don't think there's a specific genre we're focusing on. It, it would be very narrow-minded of any company to do that, um, yeah. to ba basically sort of focus on one particular direction only. And yes, you know, these are hybrids. They're, they're, they're very, very good functionality as photographic cameras, uh, equally good as video cameras. But um, surrounding tech, as you quite rightly say, is, is very, very important to us. Right, right now, streaming is 
is kind of massive um, purely because of the entire global lockdown. We've never had anything like this. And all of a sudden, the kind of things that, uh, like what I'm using right now, I mean, uh, traditionally, if I was going to be doing a, a webcam or discussion with you, I'd be using the little the lens at the bottom of the laptop. Oh. Um, the quality of that's just not good. You know, it, well, yeah. they're okay, but even those little clip-on no-name brand, you know, Chinese no-name brand type of uh, yeah. webcam, the quality is not sufficient. So, um, can it develop anything else? Or is that you? Horrendous what? feedback. Horrendous feedback. Oh, sorry. I'm not... Gonna... Okay. Somebody's microphone. Anyways. Um, okay. Um, essentially, what... Um, what what we started developing is the is things like the webcam utility. The web webcam utility is the um, is the software that allows you to plug EOS into um, into a PC or a Mac and use it as a webcam. And this is what I've got right now. I've got the EOS R, I've got the adapter on there with the uh, thirty five mm f one point four, beautiful shallow depth of field, nice little you know angle angle of view, and um, use, using this as a webcam means um, it's absolutely stunning. And it's about to, it's still in beta version, but I think in about sort of 10, 10, 14 days time, it's going to become the full version. And full version will probably be backwards compatible with upwards of about 40, 50 different cameras. And going all the way back to like, you know, yes, you know, 20D, 30D, that 40D, that sort of time period, which is quite astonishing. And it just means if, yeah. you've, got, if you've got a decent or old SLR, um, yeah. it, it could become quite a decent um, you know, webcam. And again, it images everything. You know, if I came on here and I was looking at you through the a pokey little lens on the on the back of you know, even a smartphone, for that matter, um, yeah, you, know, you, you don't believe the image quality. You don't believe you know who and what we are. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. So the, the the movement is definitely in that kind of direction. Um, <laughs> gosh, here's a good question. <laughs> Hello, Pete. How are you doing, mate? Um, <laughs> you said to me, Marge, we're moving from DSLR to mirrorless. We'll take some time getting used to. Um, it's a breeze well, to you. It's a great piece of kiss. Oh yeah, thanks, Pete. It's a, it's a really, really good comment. Um, I think at the, at the end of the day, once you get past that culture shock of, of mirrorless, uh, you fall in love yeah. with the quality and you fall in love with the capability kind of quickly. And this is what we're hoping yeah. with, specifically with the, the ESR R six. In the South African market, yeah. we were remarkably successful with the seven D two. The wildlife and the bird has just bought it like hands over fist. It was twenty yeah. million pixels. It was ten times a second. Really good tracking autofocus and a crop sensor made your 100, 400 was you know literally a 600 mil lens. Um, the R6 comes along now up to 20 frames a second, still 20 million pixels, but now full frame. Now's the time to go yeah. from crop sensor to full frame, from DSLR to mirrorless. And um, this is where you put the stake in the sand because the odds of there are 73 coming is pretty much non existent anymore, I'm afraid. But um, th this, is, this is by far and away one of the greatest pieces of work I've ever touched. Not just in terms of image quality, not just in terms of uh, you know, the video or anything like that, just that autofocus performance and that deep learning, the way it can see the human body, human face, human eye, bum, 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 the way it picks up a bird in flight, body, eye, head, uh, and, and animals. It's very, I, I, it doesn't get every single animal, uh, but obviously when you look at the sheer diversity of animals, heads and shapes and eyes, um, yeah. The the uh, yeah, it is it is interesting times. Yeah. No, brilliant. No, absolutely. So mirrorless is the way of the future. That's where it's that's where it's heading. Absolutely. Hello, Steve. Yes, I, I know I, Ian's got a camera shortly. He's going to put it in your hands in a minute. <laughs> well, not in a minute. Sometimes <laughs> the, the I love cute, it. I love cute it. to play with an R five is like so long. It's scary. <laughs> I believe. Roger, thank you so, so much, man. I, you know what? I want to keep some things um, back because we're going to be having you back on the show again. I've got quits in there in the week ahead. Yeah. But yeah. really, thank you for your time and your passion. You know, it's really great to see it. I mean, the, the feedback has been phenomenal. Um, and I thank you for your time. I mean, you are, I know you've been, a hec you've been super hectic. <laughs> and it's just so great to understand the Canon side of things and, you know, what's behind it. And, I mean, obviously, going to the next show, we're going to be chatting more, some tech stuff. I mean, you, you know your stuff back. Thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as I say, you know, it's the tip of the iceberg, mate. Um, and thanks for the great comments. Really do appreciate it. And uh, please listen in on Quinton. Um, he's a damn fine fella. Yeah, great. Thank you so, so much. Roger, have a great evening and all the best that side. Thank you so much. Adios, amigo. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. All right. So that was Roger Martian. Unbelievable. You can see he's really passionate about what he's, he's doing, about his brand, about the brand, about, you know, photography, videography. He, and that's the kind of thing that I love to see. And obviously to showcase on the show is, you know, 
what the brands are they're not just a name it's not just canon it's not just you know nikon sony fuji and the rest olympus and all that it's there's some really passionate people behind the brand that want to engage and that want to give back to the industry so that's the idea behind the show i know some of you are saying ah oh, it's a historical thing with regards to each brand but yes now we've got that done in season one the next thing is going to be all tech we're going to get excited we're going to be testing out some new things so i can't wait to obviously have roger back on and i do thank him so much for giving us his time next up we've got a phenomenal uh, content creator i know i do say this with regards to the content creators that i bring onto the show you know they're inspiring they're award-winning they're, they're the top of their game and you know especially when you meet people that are so humble and that's the kind of thing that I, i'm sure you're picking up with regards to my show these are all dark horses not really but you know they walk quietly with the big stick as a, as a saying that's back in the school we used to have you know they they're really humble about what they do but they've got incredible work absolutely incredible work and you know they're just you know just um, awesome people so the next person we have here is quentin mills um his work is absolutely great. You'll see that a lot of photographers now and a lot of us, you know, drive to one sort of way. Um, it's either portraiture or it's product or it's, you know, it's whatever, or fashion photographer, wedding photographer. But Quentin just somehow seems to be able to pull it all together and he can shoot no matter what genre <laughs> you need and he'll get it and he'll get the clients happy. And I mean, he's worked with some amazing brands as we'll chat about that in, when I bring him onto the show. So I'm really excited and, um, honored to have him join us so quentin how are you great to have you on Woo <laughs> how's it man thank you <laughs> ah there we go i love it thank you so much for joining me uh, it's an absolute pleasure and it's uh, it's kind of weird to to be on the wrong end of this uh, of the situation you know with the, the hundreds of light uh, everyone else is is on the hot seat and and then i'm just kind of throwing <laughs> them in the deep end and here i am in the deep end <laughs> so thank you <laughs> uh, we're gonna have some fun with regards to this and uh, you know i just wanted let's, let's i wanted to ask to, i wanted to go with to hunters with lights and you're on it because it just flows with we're not going to go there i want to talk to you uh, ask a little bit more about you know where did you your i mean you shoot your, your you've got uh, let me just pull up your site let me just do this because you can shoot anything is there something that you don't like shooting or can't shoot sure um you, you know no. i uh, <laughs> I know there, there must be something. Picture. There must be something that uh, that I can't shoot. Um, you know, I mean, I've I've pretty much shot uh, anything. I mean, I, I've I've even photographed a um, tombstone unveiling, um, and and what? it was it was it was probably one of the best shoots I've ever done in my life um, because of the the people and, and that sort of thing. So, I mean, I, I, for me, it's if 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 it's an interesting you know project or story. Um, I'm, I'm there, you know, that's, uh, that's really what it, uh, what it comes down to. I, I don't, I don't have a favorite. Um, although that's what I tell everyone. Um, yeah. you know, I just, I just love, um, I just love uh, creating, you know, cool images. That's really what it's all about for me. Your work's phenomenal and I absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely love it. And it's, it's really great. Where did, where did this love start? Where did you begin? Were you one of the kids that fathers had a camera and then you jumped into it? No. Uh, I think um, I, I bought my first camera because um, the, the, the girl that I was trying to date, her dad had a camera shop. Um, so, so I bought a camera. Um, it was kind of a, you know, I'll, I'll impress him um, and, and, then, and then, you know, we'll, we'll, it'll be fine. Well, the parents will accept, etc. cetera. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I, I pretty much left it, um, uh, you know, after that, it didn't work out. You know, it's one of those things. But um, uh, a couple of years later, when I was doing my uh, military service, I, um, I somehow managed to convince uh, the military that uh, I studied graphic design or, you know, being an art director. And, and I said to them, yeah, I can, I can shoot. And um, so I was transferred to uh, Paratus in, in Pretoria, the military magazine, and um, was given a, a Canon AE-1 program and some film and told to go and shoot this thing, then come back, process it and, you know, print a... Um, you know, uh, what's it called? Yeah, contact sheet. Um, yeah. I've never done. I've never done any of that before. So <laughs> it was a deep end. And I, I, again, I, I, I did that for a while. Um, and then when I when I left uh, my national service, um, I went into advertising. Again, didn't touch the yeah. uh, camera again. And no um, when I when I started my um, you know my my own business, Black Rooster Studios, um, yeah. I kind of thought, you know what? Um, I don't want to send money out. I'm sure I can do that. 
And um, that's, yeah. that's kind of become a bit of a philosophy for me. And if, if I'm, I'm pretty sure I can do it. And if I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try my best and I'll probably be able to do it anyway. But that's kind of where it started. I, you know, I, I bought a, a, a Canon 10D um, yeah. and um, it just uh, went from there. You know, not, now I'm actually doing more, uh, generating more revenue from the photography than from the, um, the web and uh, design side of things, which is uh, pretty cool. But for me, it's all the same. You know, you've got, you've got a, a, whether it's a small screen, um, on the back of a camera, whether it's on a desktop or whether it's in a magazine, for me it's all the same. You know, I just love um, I just love uh, creating and um, you know bringing concepts to life, etc. In fact, I think the the, the video component. I think it was Johanna was saying that you know are they not going to make still cameras anymore? And I, I think for me the 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 sort of the ability to to bring you know everything that that I've ever done in in the sort of advertising type arena or, or marketing type arena and, and, and be able to create a f like a film or whatever. I, for me, that's a really, really exciting. And, and um, it's, it's where I'm, I'm sort of pushing the, the business into. What do you, what would you say was uh, that your driving force with regards to pushing forward? Because, you know, as any entrepreneur, you, you hit those hard times and, you know, there's a make or break. What would you like, what pushes you through that? What, what makes you succeed? I, I, I don't want to say passion because that's that's like the most overused term on the planet. Um, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm very passionate about this, so you must hire yeah. me. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think I think the I, I am I, I, I am passionate about what I do. I love what I'm doing. If if there was yeah. if someone said to me, if you could do whatever you wanted to do today, what would it be? I would do exactly this. I just wouldn't charge my clients. Um, you know, I mean, I, I've, I've, uh, I've, I've thought about doing um, a lot of different projects where if I could get a corporate sponsor, we could yeah. do it without the clients having to pay, um, you know, and, and, and that sort of thing. Because you know, for me, it's, 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 it's just about creating stuff, you know, and, and I remember when, um, when I used to shoot weddings. For me, the and my assistant uh, at the time was, you know, he always kind of look at my shoulder and and, and I it kind of says the mojo there, and I'd say, hold on, hold on, and then we'd we'd kind of you know put him where and just shoot it, flash, ah, oh, goosebumps would come and I'd say, yeah, the mojo's back. Uh, the, seeing that that image with the light and the thing and the sunset and whatever, that's that's what drives me. Um, I've got goosebumps now like crazy, but that's what it is. Uh, and it doesn't, it, like I said, it doesn't matter for me whether it's whether it's um, like a, a print ad or an idea or a cool t-shirt or whatever it is that, that we put together, it's this is what I was meant to be doing. And, and I'm very lucky that it actually is what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's, I mean, just looking and those of you that are watching this and you will obviously all agree when you see the way that Quentin talks. And I mean, that's the one thing that I've noticed, again, not the one thing, there's many things that I've noticed with the creators that have done really well is is that and i'm sorry i'm using that that cliche overused word but the passion you, the way you talk the energy that you talk with you know it's it, what i find when i when i'm talking to someone like yourself is that i'm actually drawn into your world because you know the way you talk you talk up front and you sit forward and the way you're talking is <laughs> compared to I've, I've spoken to you in in other shows where i'm talking to some people and you know they're like yeah and i kind of I, I like i like photography and I kind of like this. And which client is going to book someone that you, you can be a phenomenal photographer or something like that. But, you know, there has to be that personality. There has to be that synergy. And seeing your excitement and what you're talking about, I mean, I would also <laughs> love not to have to charge my clients and just create and have some fun. But For sure. So from that point of view, I mean, so you get excited and stuff like that. I think one of the big things that does let our photographers or our, as creatives down is the business side of things. How much do you focus on the business side of things? Um, I, I suck at, at the business. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm a typical creative. I come up with ideas um, and, then I, and then I run with them and then I, I kind of go, well, but how, how am I going to make this happen? Um, what about the, what about the, what about, I, it, you know, if it, if it wasn't for my wife um, putting the handbrake on my excessive spending, um, I'd, I would be broke. Um, I'd, I'd be doing I'd be doing photography with my with my hands, you know. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, uh, you know, because I, 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 yeah, but but it's it's incredibly important, you know. I mean, um, the the fact of the matter is that if you if you are a photographer, um, it's 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 got so little to do about taking the picture. If you're part of a, a like a, a business where you are the photographer and you have 
uh, you know, business developers and, 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 and client service guys, et cetera, that are going out finding the work and you're just shooting it. Well, that's a different story because then, then I think you're more of a, a technician than you are a photographer, but that's a separate story. Um, I think that yeah. it's exceptionally important to, to realize that um, you've got to be, uh, you know, out there and you've got to be marketing and you've got to be talking to clients in a way that they, they get sort of sucked into to what, uh, what it is that you're saying and they buy into it. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's crazy how, how much the business side of things is, um, is so much more important than, um, than the, the photography. I mean, the photography is obviously uh, a huge part of it, but you've got to be able to run a business. You've got to be able to put money aside from each job so that you can have money to buy new cameras with or replace cameras, et cetera. It's, it, it's, it's, it's very, very important to, to focus on that. And it's, it's something that I think if I had a better business brain, um, I would probably be, be you know, uh, better off in, in the, the sort of business and financial side of it. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you, you know, you, you've got to do what you can do and play to your strengths. Um, I, I learned from everyone that, uh, that I come into uh, contact with, uh, you know, try and take the, the, the strengths that, that I see in them and try and, um, you know, uh, improve myself with it. I mean, and, and you had Roger on uh, before me. And I, I have to say that... Um, I, I, I almost wish that I could spend all my time with Roger because A, he's hilarious and, and we have a lot of fun together. Um, but but he's, he's the kind of guy where I, I think to myself, I'm not a photographer. I mean, I suck when, when, I, when, I, when I'm kind of, uh, when I think about it. I mean, he, we, 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 did, a, um, uh, we did a road show in uh, um, Mauritius uh, for, for Canon and he, you know, we went out on a bit of a walk around the streets and, and he said, oh, hold on a second, you know what we should do? We should do, we should do like panning shots. And, and I'm going, uh, uh, okay. I haven't even thought about that, but he's there. Okay, cool. So 10th of a second and uh, right, let's go. And oh, look at this. And it's, for me, that's, that's like amazing. I mean, the, uh, that energy, uh, I wish that I had. Um, but, but uh, you know, those kind of things I, I, I try and pick up on and, and, and you know, take on as, as, as being traits that I think would, uh, would be cool to have. And now tell me, talking about that, like, who would you say, like, if I had to say, who is Quentin Mills? Like, what, like, what makes you tick? I mean, I know you creativity and creating, but are you like an introvert, secret introvert, or are you an extrovert? <laughs> tell me, like, do you like biking, like, I want to try and categorize you or put you, not, I don't want to put you in a box, but understand who you are. Sure. Um, I, I'm probably the poster child for um, the imposter syndrome. Um, I, seriously, I, 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 think, I think that, that I'm, I'm p particularly average as a, as a photographer. I don't think that, um, that my work is, is that good. Um, I, I, I try really hard uh, and, and I, you know, I, get, I get things right. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not I'm not as confident as, as you as you might think, um, and I, I don't I don't really know what the, the origins of, of that is. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I love I love being with people, and that's that's what that's what I feed off of, you know, people's energy, etc. Um, I really enjoy that uh, that part of it, uh, you know, the interacting with people. Um, I um, I love the outdoors. Uh, it'd be great to. I mean, if, if anyone said to me, "Listen, uh, let's go and camp." Um, yeah. I'm out of the door uh, in my 20 year old Land Rover Defender, and we're riding on dirt roads and arms out of windows and suntan. It's, it's just you know that's that's the kind of thing that uh, that I'd love to be doing. But I, I think a, a lot of times I get stuck in the 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 admin and the business of um, uh, you know of of making a living, which is which is sometimes quite tough. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's two, there's two people. There's the, there's the one that, um, uh, you know, is quite outgoing and gregarious, et cetera. Um, yeah. and then, you know, once, once you sort of come back, in fact, I had a, I had a, 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 a way that I used to describe weddings when, when I used to shoot them, you know, you, you go to the wedding and everything is on like, you know, turning it up to 12 and it's like, and then as soon as you, you, you finish the wedding, you close your door and it's like, and there's nothing crickets uh, yeah. for me that's kind of, that's kind of what it is you know I would go out and I'd, a client comes in we shoot the hell out of their portrait and it's amazing and then they go oh. you know it's <laughs> it's weird <laughs> so true though <laughs> never put it that way but that's so cute <laughs> yeah. it's it's just it's so interesting and those of you that are watching uh, and i just want to put it there is is you know 
this is what I want the show to be about. I want you guys to, to look at it and go, you know, I'm a Quentin Mills. I'm that person and I can achieve. I mean, Quentin, your, your work is beautiful. It's amazing. I mean, while that's you're right. busy talking, I'm showing the people. The, and that's why, please excuse when you see it cutting. I just, you know, as you're talking, I want the people, the, those viewers that are watching to actually see your work that haven't seen your work. And it's, it's really, it's phenomenal. And for you to think, you know, you think your work's average. And I love that and I respect that because, you know, there's my cat that's giving some noise here. <laughs> what, what, what kind of cat is it? Um, it's it's a cat. <laughs> we've got a non-profit legs. organization. Let me tell you. So we've got a non-profit. Really? So I've got like five dogs, three cats. You know, people come and they end up giving me. <laughs> we, we, we adopt a lot. Anyway, I think it's yeah. enough talking. Cause, anyway, so <laughs> so with regards to that, I love it because I also a, a, a trend that I've noticed is that a lot of the creators that I'm interviewing don't see their work as being perfect yet you know that they they, they, they they think they were can always be better and i think that's where you're fitting yourself into as well so quickly getting on to this i just wanted to quickly check um let's go on to okay cool i'm going to quickly pull up something else so there's the cat now here we go let's let's let's, let's be real kind of there we go yes hello Okay, so he wants, <laughs> he wants attention. Um, anyway, so getting on to that, I'm going to jump on to you. I want to get onto your uh, Instagram as well and that kind of thing. So now tell me with regards to it, getting booking big clients. I think that's one of the big things that people want. I mean, you've booked Rocker Mamas. You've booked uh, Adcock. Is it Adcock as well? Um, yeah. So you've, you've got the Legacy Group, Ocean Basket, Tribeca Coffee, Bloomberg. I mean, Nivea. What's it like? What does it take, and how did you get into the, you know, their scope? If I can put it that way. Well, I think the the, the crazy thing is, I'm, I've I've never I've never really marketed um, myself to uh, to agencies, um, I, and I, I don't know why. And I, 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 you know, hopefully there's not a lot of agency people watching, but um, yeah. I I think the reason why is because I know what I was like as a junior art director and as an art director. And I'm not sure that I could deal with people like that at this stage of my life. Um, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 you get to a point where you really don't want to take instructions for someone who's 12. Um, but, <laughs> you know, so, so for, the, for the most part, it's a, it's a case of, um, you know, word of mouth, et cetera. Um, you know, I think it's important, again, to the, to the business side of things that, um, you know, if, you, if you've got a website, your search engine optimization needs to be spot on so that if there's a client in the UK that's searching for event photographer in South Africa, you come up, yeah. your work is good, and they hire you. And I mean, um, you know, that's a, a lot of the work that I get um, event photography wise um, from uh, international clients is exactly that. Um, you know, I mean, one of the clients that, that I've done that for is uh, Mike Bloomberg. That's the, the Mike Bloomberg. Uh, you know, he was, um, he was here for the, the C40 Mayors um, uh, conference. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, it was quite a few years ago, but basically I was his photographer while he was here. So, um, you know, every one of the meetings that they had, every one of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the different um, side networking groups that was happening, um, I was there uh, shooting for him. Um, you know, even, even to the point where I've got a recording on my phone of what it was like to, to be in the escort uh, vehicle uh, charging down wherever it was. I think it was Louis Boerta at the time. Um, sirens yeah. going, blaring, and, and the cops leaning out the window, and you know, yeah, all right, well, that kind of it was, it was the most ridiculous thing I've ever experienced. But um, you know, it, it's it's that kind of thing. You know, you've you, you've got to put yourself out there, and and um, and hopefully, if you if you you know, speaking uh, the language that people want to hear, they'll find you. If um, if they are seeing the images that they want to see, they'll find you, etc. You know, so it's 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 difficult. I, I don't have an agent. Um, I, I you know yeah. don't think that that's really something that um, you know that uh, that I would uh, be able to. You know, again, that's one of those. Well, I'm not good enough. Um, but it really is just a case of of um, just shooting consistent good work for for clients that you want to get. I mean, as an example, um, you know the. The, that um, orange grinder and um, yes. the, uh, the shoes, etc. Those. Uh, this is an interesting story. Those. Um, those are, are, are things. So I thought. Well, hold on a second. I want to get more clients, and I want to shoot sexy shit like this. So 
Um, I've, I've got a client who's a, who's a hardware company, which we've done a whole lot of web stuff. When I, I went there and I said, listen, I need one of these, took it back, shot it, and then took it back. Um, yeah. for, the, for the running shoes, I went to a popular yeah. um, outdoor uh, store um, tried them on, said these are fantastic, took them home, photographed them, and then took them back the next day saying, yeah, it doesn't go with my, you know, running uh, pants uh, kind of thing. So, you know, it's definitely a case of also if you want to shoot that. stuff, if you want to shoot stuff, go and, and, and shoot it so that people can see it because otherwise, you know, what are you going to do? They, they can't see the work. They won't hire you. Now, now, can I tell you, so I have to jump in there. You know, so one of the things that 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 I did was, you know, I, I tried to build a group, and we're going to get obviously on to Hunters of Light now as well. But you know, I wanted to build a group and say, guys, hey, creators, let's get together, let's do some stuff, let's create some cool, exciting content with a brand in mind, and you know, it, it might be for free, um, but it's you know, we're going to create content that's going to drive you know business, and uh, uh, no. Nah. Yep, <laughs> and, and can I tell you now? And it, what's interesting is I am really busy now. I, like I, ca I can't tell you how busy I am. And you know what I did? It's unfortunately or fortunately, and can I tell you? It's paid off. I did some things for free at a yep. calculated cost. Calculated cost. Remember, it mm. does cost me, and like you know, it costs them. But a yep. calculated cost, pretty much, pretty much what you did there, and it paid off. Now, <laughs> and for, like the clients are coming, and I'm going. I, I, I can't. I, I can't. Yeah. Absolutely. And I want to I mean, share. I but, you know, the yeah. thing is that there's there's uh, there's that whole sort of um, working for exposure thing, and I, I think that that's that's really bad road to to go down. Um, but I yeah. think that you know you've got to think of these types of things as as marketing. So if you yeah. if you were going to um, put your your adverts in in a magazine and it was going to cost you ten yeah. grand to be on that A4 page, etc. Um, what is it going to cost you to go and shoot something? So, you know, if you've got a higher lights, uh, you've got a higher studio, go and do it. And then you take yeah. that and you start putting that on your website and on your flyers and on whatever. People look at it and go, oh, that's really polished. I think that's that's yeah. pretty cool. Um, and then you, you know, you, you're then able to target those clients. Simple as that. 100%. No, 100%. Absolutely. I, I, I love what you did there. I think, and your works again. That's that's insane. So let's jump on to Hunters of Light. Um, yeah. Talk more about Hunters of Light, where it came about, and more from that. Okay, so um, the Hunters of Light started at the beginning of the the lockdown. Um, I, I, all of my work dried up one hundred percent. So, you know, the portrait, uh, corporate portrait shoots that I was going to be doing. Um, the the events, uh, you know, etc. That was all completely, completely gone, and um, it was a case of saying, well, if I don't do so, keep myself busy, um, I'm going to go down this uh, rabbit warren of uh, negativity, etc. And um, I decided, well, uh, let's let's do this because there's a lot of other people that are out there, photographers that um, are in the same boat, and um, they a lot of them are newbies. They 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 don't know that you. You know, you go through ups and downs and they possibly don't have the experience to weather that. So I thought, well, we'll put together a Facebook group. Um, it'll be like inspiration. We'll have live streams every day and um, it'll be amazing because people are all at home doing nothing. Um, so so basically what it was is um, uh, the, the format was uh, uh, pretty much an hour long live stream. And in the beginning, the first, I think, two or three weeks, we did two every day. Um, and we've got uh, the most amazing uh, uh, photographer presentations on there. Um, some uh, explorers of light from uh, from the US. We've got some uh, some guys from the UK. Loads of South African guys. Um, and um, yeah, it's just uh, it's gone from strength to strength. It's it's really it's really all about um, showcasing uh, amazing photographers uh, to people who are are really keen on on learning and, and being inspired. Um, and um, you know, the, as I said, we, we I started that group on the uh, the night of uh, lockdown, and yeah. um, we're sitting on just over three thousand members uh, at the moment. So it's it's been a, a fun, fantastic uh, you know set of growth, and it's it's uh, we've got a so there's the Facebook group. Um, there is also a the website which has got um, a lot of the you know behind the uh, the, the initiative etc. Uh, there's also a YouTube. Yeah. Um, uh, channel which has got um, all of the content that we've created and that's sitting on about 74 hours now of um, content 
Um, so, I mean, I, I'm really proud of, the, of how the, the group has uh, come together and the people who participated. I think it's absolutely fantastic. That's so great to see the people, get, you know, getting behind one creators, getting behind creators. You know, that's yeah. that's what it's done. You're only as strong as your network. Well, not really, um, but, you know, the network does help. And, you know, it's sure. a time when we get together and we have to help each other. And I really thank you for building that group. And it's it's phenomenal to, to see that kind of organization going forward. And congratulations. And thank you for thank doing you. that. Thank you. Now, tell me advice out there for, you know, fellow con uh, content creators that are looking at getting into the, you know, going through this difficult time now or they're just starting out their business what what sort of advice would you give them sure um i, I know that you always sort of uh, get those um uh, blogs or, or um inspirational because they're saying what what would you tell your 20 year old self um <laughs> and <laughs> if if i if, if there's one thing that i think um if i if i manage to circumvent um, I think my life would be completely different, and that is uh, fear. My my biggest problem is fear. Um, I fear uh, not being able to do it. I fear the client not, um, you know, liking the work, um, etc. You know, so so before I've even started, I'm, I, I I don't want to start because I'm, I'm I'm fearful of what could happen, what may happen, what if, what if, what if, and that's that's complete nonsense. You know, I think there's there's a lot of things that. Um, that I would have really have been doing if I had not been hampered by that. So the first thing is to um, is to say is to say um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the yeah, first sorry, thing yeah. say, that's cool. First thing to say is is, is don't be scared. Um, you know, you you have to start and 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 and, and move forward. Uh, I'm I'm completely self-taught. Uh, you know, the the only um, the only workshop that I went to was one that um, it was funny enough a, 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 an off-camera flash uh, one. I think it was Saber and Celia, maybe many yeah. years ago. Um, and the, the only the only sort of because it, it's all just confirmation of what I'd already sort of worked out for myself. But um, don't rely on 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 you know having to oh, I must go to university or I must go and do this course. Just start, go. Um, the best place I can tell you now the best place to learn how to use a new piece piece of equipment is at a wedding. Because if you stuff it up, you're in big trouble. So you have to learn and you have to talk. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. don't do that. <laughs> but I did that all the time. I did that all the time. I, you know, I mean, I, I started using off-camera flash, and um, and the one wedding, I could not work out why the flash was not talking to it. You know, afterwards, I realized that my assistant was holding the flash slightly off, and the infrared wasn't. You know, but we worked through it, and we and we made it work, and it was awesome. But you know, so so just just keep going, try new stuff, and and don't be don't be scared of um, putting yourself out there. Um, you know, it's it's, and also you've just got to you've got to work. But no one is going to give it to you. Um, you've got to work. You've got to put in the effort, um, and and uh, just keep going. Uh, you know, I, I think that if you another problem that I have is sitting cold. I suck at sitting cold. I think you need to you need to kind of say, well, where is it that I want to be? Do I want to be sitting in a Land Rover in a Serengeti? Um, if so, how do I get there? And you need to then park, you know, chart your path um, and see where you know where you're going. Yeah. Um, you know, and see where you're going, and 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 go and, and reassess all the time and, and see where it is that you that you're not moving as fast as you should, and, and go for it from there. Um, assist as many photographers as you can. Um, don't, don't expect to be paid. Go out there and say, listen, I'll I'll, I'll keep quiet. I just want to carry your bags. I want to watch you. Um, I I was very lucky to um, when when I was shooting weddings I had I had two assistants that um, both of them worked with me for years um, uh, you know and, and neither of them wanted payment not a cent um, and I I'm, to this day I'm blown away by that um, you know they they they're amazing people um, and they just wanted to learn how to do this stuff and it became less of an assistant photographer situation and more of a friendship. So we'd meet up on the weekends and, and, and for eight to ten hours. Um, but if you if you go and assist different photographers, you'll see different styles, different genres, how people use equipment differently. You know, it's not all the same. I, I don't like reflectors. Do that, you know. But yeah. uh, other photographers are brilliant at them. Um, you know, the more the more variety you you experience, the, the better you are as as a photographer. But just keep working. 
and love that. Two things I just want to add to that is that, you know, one of the things that I, because I do obviously as well, like you do, is um, training, teaching workshops and stuff like that. And one of the big things that I notice is everyone wants to get behind the camera. No one wants to hold the reflector or set up the lights or, you know, do that kind of work. Everyone wants to get that shot. And it's one of the things that I know when I was, you know, learning was I was that I wanted to get the shot, but then, you know, I realized that, sure, but how did he set up those lights and mm. that, how did he hold it? So I started becoming more of like assisting and helping and trying to work out that side, yeah. which is, I think a big thing that what you mentioned there is that, you know, assist, help assist, don't to go to the, just to get the photograph, go there yeah. to learn about the lighting, the setups and all that. And then the second thing I wanted to ask you, and this is a question to you now is, you know, what I've noticed also on the, on the pro side of things, if I can put it out there, very seldomly do you get professionals wanting to, you know, bring assistance on. You do, as I can understand, I'm right. You open to obviously letting people assist you. Yeah, I think yeah. it's, it's a, sorry, do you want to, was there more? No, 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 go for it, go for it, go okay. for it, yeah. I think that, um, you know, in back in the day um, when I was less grey and you know, etc. Um, you know, the the there were photographers that um, that had full time assistants, um, and it uh, you know that it, it was seen as a as a um, you know it, it was a job. Um, like an think, apprenticeship thing, yeah. Well, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and um, and those those photographers who were assistant went on to becoming. Um, amazing photographers in in their own right. Um, I I'm, I'm sure it still happens, um, but I don't know how much that happens anymore. Where you've got someone who um, you know comes into your studio every day and they they work either half day or full day and they get paid and and away you go. Um, I, I, to be honest, I I don't know if that um, if that uh, is the case. I, for when it was. Um, when I was, as I said, shooting the weddings, um, you know, there it would be every wedding, I'd have someone there and they would, just, you know, carry the bags and, you know, give me water and make sure I was uh, watered and fed and whatever. Um, and then they would they would learn uh, that way and then asking me questions and, and, you know, basically going through it and also watching how I interacted with, uh, with the clients. Um, I'm sure that uh, from a commercial point of view, there's a lot of um, assistants that are, you know, they're freelance, but they, you know, they work regularly. Um, and I think yeah. it's a case of, of trying to find those photographers that are working commercially and that are being paid or, or charging properly. And that's another whole story, the whole pricing of, of, of work, um, where you can afford to have first assistant, second assistant, etc. You know, I think a lot of um, a lot of photographers are not charging what they should be charging, and um, yeah. a they can't make a living, but certainly wouldn't be able to pay um, an assistant, um, you know, uh, on a full-time basis. So there's a lot of things that go into it, but um, you really just got to go there. I, I I will say um, openly that there's two people that um, that I've met during the process of a hunter supply, where I would go and carry their bags. Um, and Nick Van Renen. Nick, if you're watching this, I will carry your bag any day to see what um, what it is that uh, how you do the shit that you do, and um, even quicker. Absolutely, mate. Yeah. Um, you photo photograph uh, 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 you know some stickers. I'm there seriously um, because I I, I I respect the craft and the, and the and the quality of the image that they put out, and I know that I can learn from them. I can learn from everyone. You know, I mean, the, yeah. the, I think that when you get to a point where you go, man. Uh, yeah, that's that's you kind of um, you know you kind of lost it there, but I, I, I learn from from everyone. Um, you know, it's it's just something that you that you have to do. And I'll I, yeah, I'll absolutely go and assist them any day. Love it. Thank you. I, I'm gonna. I, I I love what you're saying, and you know that's that's. What's interesting is that I open up obviously as many shoots as I can to have and as many assistants as possible because the amount of stuff that I've learned through someone assisting me and saying, hey, Steve, what about this? Or what about this angle? Or mm. even afterwards when they've gone on their own and they've, they, you know, they've become their own, they have started their own companies and it's reciprocal. It's, it's, it's it, sometimes it's, it's not reciprocal, but sometimes it is. So, uh, you know, you give like you're doing and it does come back to you. And, uh, you know, it's been amazing chatting to you. I, I can't wait to have another chat because <laughs> we're going to go for another two hours. But sure. 
to end off, I, I mean, thank you for your words of advice, but now let's start, we're going to end off on something that's slightly quirky. Is uh, It's something I ask my guests, and I'll tell you why I'm asking you these questions at the end, is, is tell me one word to describe yourself, one color, and one animal. This, this is not on your questions yet. <laughs> <laughs> what was, what was the, one word. Um, one word to describe yourself? Energy. Energy, one color? Orange. Okay, and then animal? Mm. I've gone blank. Animals. Um, leopard. How's that? Leopard. Only because energy I... orange leopard. <laughs> so we've got your new stage name. You are the energy orange leopard from now on. So, <laughs> great, great call. <laughs> I'm going to be jumping into the, the psychology of that in another episode. But you are the energy orange leopard. And it's been great chatting to you, Mr. Leopard. No, it's just a little quirky thing that I get. I mean, we've had, I think it's the pink, pink, what? It's the energetic pink elephant. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> lovely. <laughs> anyway, no, but Quentin, thank you, thank you so so much. I definitely Absolute want to get pleasure. you back onto the show again. Um, I respect everything that you're doing, and well done. Thank you so much for Hunters of Light, and you're putting so much energy into the industry. It's 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 wonderful to have that. Thanks, man. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for uh, for uh, inviting me on. Loved it. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Have a great evening. All the best, and I'll chat to you again soon. Cool, man. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Cheers. All right, ladies and gents, that was Quentin Mills, an absolute phenomenal person. You can see a great content creator, humble guy. Uh, you know, again, I, and it seems like I'm repeating myself with regards to the guests that I have on the show. You know, you don't have to be arrogant to be great. If anything, you know, people warm up to people that are confident. That's a different story. And that are humble and that have got an energy. Um, I know we're talking about passion, as it, but you know you can feed off when someone's talking and they they're excited about what they do. It's you can't help not um, you know get enthralled by them and you know want to be around them and want to learn more from them. And I think that's one of the things that we have to look at is how do we present ourselves to our clients and to others? Are we the type that go there and we're wondering why we're not getting a job because we can't talk like this and we you know it's it's a little bit. You know, you kind of want to go out there and let me just quickly here, keep all Clinton, here we go. <laughs> there it is from Martin. Sorry, I just want to get those out. There we go. Okay, so with regards to it, it's it's about being the, the confidence of that and people feed off that. And I just want to reiterate with, with regards to that. The other thing that I've picked up, obviously, this is the eighth episode with regards to the show, is that there's that hunger for more, for better, for, you know, for just creating that that keeps people driven you also hear that never give up it's it's all about pushing forward persevering no matter what's happening and how it's happening if you've got that concept and you know it's going to work you put your heart your soul and you go into it i mean there is obviously times when you go okay i need to pivot and do a different direction but it's not always just um you know it's not working and give up keep pushing forward reach out there's a network i mean you've got the hunters of light you've got various different people i'm open to it there's so many people that's open to helping others because again the more you help someone else the more help comes back to you and it's not about expecting that it's it's just how life happens and good people will do that so those of you that are out there that are watching the show that you know this is a difficult time but again i keep saying it's only as difficult as you let it be don't let negativity get you down. Stay positive. Positivity drives and breeds positivity. Those people that we've had on, they make a plan no matter what. It also doesn't mean that you have to be busy all the time. Reflect, sit back, relax. You know, sometimes you have to take, like Richard Branson, for instance. Some of you don't like him, some of you do. Some of his greatest um, ideas came when he was relaxing on a beach in Jamaica. You know, you kind of have to find where your zen is and go, okay, cool, this is where it is. Those of you that aren't professional with regards to it, I mean, this is obviously more professional advice. Those of you that are in photography, you know, look at a different way of shooting the, the, the stuff if it's just a hobby for you. 
try shoot a different way i'm going to be asking the obviously moving into season two i'm going to be starting to get into obviously a little bit more about creation and content creation that kind of thing right now it's getting to know creators and what drives them and then we're going to move into a little bit more about how they create what they do so i do thank you all for i mean it's an hour and 20 minutes the show i do try and say that i'll get it into 30 minutes but please give me your comments i mean could i have made this shorter or would you have liked it in 30 minutes um, this is recorded so you can go back please share this please go and subscribe um, on the YouTube channel because I'll have a list of everything that we talked about there you know connection uh, uh, links to the different brands and products and that kind of thing but I just want to check with regards to it is um, could I make it a little bit sh shorter or did you enjoy it uh, that's a big thing with regards to me anyone that would like to be on the show please uh, um, let you give me a shout if you would like to be featured give me a shout send me a, a message let's see if i can get you on absolutely i want to try and showcase as many photographers to the world of content creators videographers i mean i've had various different people let's let's get us out there let's let the people see what you're up to um then next week we have got i'm going to be chatting to the guys from tudor tech um gareth uh, we're going to be chatting to them. So those of you that don't know them, that is the Sigma side of things. They've got GTEC, they've got SanDisk, they've got Olympus. So, yeah, that's next week. So if you want to catch in with there. And then our creators, also a little bit of a secret coming in. Um, but, yeah, that's going to be happening next week. Other than that, I thank you so much for joining me this evening. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay creative. Till next time, I'm Stephen Siegel, and this is Through the Lens. Have a great evening and a great week ahead. Thank you so, so much.